Welcome back. In our segment, Midcap Spotlight, Abhishek is joining in and he's going to be focusing on CSB Bank. Abhishek, over to you. Well, Rima, to focus on CSB Bank is on account of the business update that they have given, wherein the momentum is pretty strong on the loan growth. Uh, so let's start with deposit. It grew by 10% uh, YOI and about 3.6% sequentially. The CASA or the low cost deposit, that's grown by 32% YOI and about 1% sequentially. The CASA ratio has improved YOI but declined on a sequential basis. However, no taking away from the fact that the loan growth is pretty robust at about 23.6%. 6% YOI and about 8% sequentially. In that, the gold loan portfolio has performed really well, uh, growing by 47.5% YOI and about 13.1% sequentially. Remember that, you know, gold portfolio or gold loans are a high yielding product, so that can boost or, you know, help in maintaining net interest margin at healthy levels. So, gold loan share has increased to 45.5%. That compares to about 28% YOI and about 43.5% sequentially. Even X of gold loan, uh, you know, the loan portfolio has grown uh, strong on a sequential basis by about 4.2%. Back to you. Okay, that is the update on CSB Bank, up 5.5% in a weak market actually. Uh, but the other space that is doing really well is pharma stocks. They have been gaining in an otherwise weak market over the past few sessions. Ikta is joining us to tell us what is leading to this defense sing buy today. Uh, Ikta. Thanks for that. Well, yes, pharma stocks have been uh, seen, uh, seeing a, some amount of buying in the past couple of trading sessions. And one of the reasons is obviously because of defensive buying. But other than that, it seems as though there is some incremental positivity when it comes to the fundamentals, when it comes to pharmaceutical stocks. So, for example, U.S. price pressure is expected to reduce for a lot of these pharmaceutical companies, probably to 5 to 8 percent versus 10 to 15 odd percent. Also, when it comes to the Indian pharma market, there seems to be a lot of bullishness uh, in the Indian pharma market growth simply because there is one big headwind which uh, is now behind us which is basically the NLEM which is the National List of Essential Medicines which was announced for 2022. Also the Indian pharma market is estimated to grow around 11 to 12 percent in the next three to four years. Now in terms of a couple of individual opportunities the street is also watching what could come out of Revlimid generic which is the blockbuster cancer drug. Analysts estimate that the RL can make up to around $500 million to $600 million from the opportunity in the next three years. Zydus and Cipla together could make up to around $300 million. Revlimid Generic, remember, is a blockbuster cancer drug, $8.5 billion in terms of sales before there was generic pharma that entered into the market. Now, uh, specifically on Cipla, remember Cipla is at a record high. Uh, there is optimism from Revlimid Generic, Advert Generic, which the street would be watching out for. There was a recent inspection of the indoor plant from where Advert Generic, which is the inhalation drug, is filed. Also, the company has guided for uh, two to three complex generics per year. Lastly, in terms of risks, US FDA inspections picking up adverse outcomes from US FDA inspections. For example, Biocon, Cipla, Glenmark would be uh, a couple of examples that come, uh, come, to, come to mind in terms of recent inspections. And other risks continue, such as price pressure, challenges in the launch pipeline, and fear on uh, cap on trade margins for the India market as well as discounts. In terms of valuations, yes, a lot of the stocks have uh, you know, run up in the recent days, but if you compare them to their 52-week highs, there are just a couple, such as Cipla and Sun Pharma, which have been quite resilient as compared to the rest. Okay, all right, Ekta, thank you so much. So that's what uh, happening with the pharma space, but the oil and gas space is also in focus today. And MGL, apart from being impacted by the hike in domestic gas prices that we have seen today, uh, they have also received a negative order from the PNGRB. So PNGRB has ordered MGL to pay the pipeline tariff for the Uran Trombe line as per the approved rate from 1st of Jan 2014. Uh, so it is a period over a couple of uh, years for which they have to pay this tariff. This is to be cleared in two months according to the PNGRB after which they will have to pay interest on this amount. Demand was dis disputed multiple times at various forums by the company but finally PNGRB has come out with an order that they have to pay this amount. Uh, as per company's notes to accounts, uh, the total amount comes out around 330 crore rupees. They have been showing it as a contingent liability in their notes. Uh, there is no specific number that is given in the order, but... <clears throat> 
the idea is that this is the amount that they will have to pay. This implies the 33 rupees per share impact and analysts say that the EPS impact could be anywhere between 1.5 to 2 rupees per share. However, remember it is a one-time expense and it is not a recurring expense for the company. Uh, company sources are suggesting that they will contest the order in higher courts but seems like yes, this time they will have to pay this amount but remains to be seen which way things go. For now, it is a negative order for MGL Rima. Okay, that's uh, MGL currently down, close to about 3.5%. By the way, the sell-off has accelerated a bit for our market. So we were at that 17,000 mark when we began the show. But in the last 30 minutes, things have taken a turn for the worse. We've lost another 50 points at 16,957, below the 200-day moving average as well on the Nifty. In terms of stocks where we've seen a bit of a collapse, uh, keep your eye on Adani Enterprises. It's a sharp 7% fall on Adani Enterprises in the last few minutes. Um, you know, this, uh, and it's fallen on very large volumes as well. So watch out for that. Auto stocks continue to be under pressure, despite broadly the numbers looking up. So even something like an Aisha Motors, where we've seen record sales, I think 145% higher on a year-on-year -year basis in terms of Royal Enfield sales. Aisha Motors is down close to about 5%. Clearly, the markets are worried. Profits are being taken wherever there is money to be made. So Aisha Motors is down close to about 5%. Maruti is another big loser today. That's dragging the markets by about 3.5%. Um, so in a bit of an iffy place for our markets right now, uh, Midcaps too have started selling off with the Midcap index down half a percent. We're going to take your leave on Midcap radar from the entire team. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Money, money, money is. Sorry. Uh, your <laughs> it's your stocks. It's thanks. your stocks. <laughs> What's the next? <laughs> okay.